Uh, please give us a brief introduction. Sir, my name is Devesh Mehta, and I have completed my BLLB from University Law College, Bhubaneswar. I completed my LLM from Gangadhar Mahapatra Law College, Puri. My hobbies is to paint uh, Patachitra art, and in the leisure time, I usually love to do some craft from waste materials. Okay. Okay, there was the Patachitra. It's uh, one of the finest art forms that is being uh, uh, nowadays that is uh, being displayed in the international scenario also. So where from which part of Odisha it was originated and what does it depict? So uh, ma'am, sorry, uh, ma'am, it is uh, from Raghurajpur village of Puri and it uh, basically depicts our culture of Odisha, the Baishtavism and uh, all the bases of Lord Jagannath. Okay. Uh, yes, when you're talking about Pattajitra, so uh, that is basically, uh, like you said, the Vaishnava culture, mainly uh, with the culture and traditions of Lord Jagannath. Uh, hmm. So that you have to give uh, emphasis on. Okay, okay, okay. sir. Okay, fine. Um, you have given anything in achievements? So in achievement, I was once uh, the Steel City Best Orator. So I've given, in achievement, I've given that. Uh, Steel City, like Raul Kela. Raul Kela, yes. Raul yes. Kela Best Orator. OK. Yes. So uh, what are the skills that you have learned as an orator, which is going to help you uh, in your uh, you know career as a um, career in judiciary, as a civil judge? The so first thing is to be outspoken because whatever uh, situation we will be getting, we need to be outspoken. We cannot hold our views to ourselves. We should let the view uh, to the whole world uh, and also should make that application to the present society. That will help me in my career as a judiciary. If uh, whenever I get a situation like that, I can uh, uh, take uh, just uh, replace. Uh, Sorry, sir. I can just uh, place my views in front of others and also make them understand how it will be applicable in today's generations. Mm -hmm. OK, so um, which is your favorite uh, paper uh, as per your syllabus uh, in law? The procedure. Procedural law is your uh, favorite. OK, so. Um, in CPC, uh, tell me something about uh, the concept of uh, restitution. What do you mean by that? So the concept of restitution means to, uh, uh, it is actually uh, when any judgment is altered in uh, while in case of review or in appeal, then uh, to give the party into the proper position. OK. Um, so you know about uh, uh, the three concepts, okay? That is uh, res sub judice, res, res judicata, judicata, and uh, stare decisis, right? So what is the difference between three? Uh, first, you tell me the basic concepts of these three, and uh, if you can give me the difference between these three. So res sub judice uh, means it will stay the suit. Uh, if one suit is filed in a court having competent jurisdiction and another suit is filed in another court uh, having the competent jurisdiction, then it will stay the former, uh, it will say stay the latter suit and uh, so that there will not be any uh, coinciding of judgments. While in case of res judicata, once a matter has already been decided, it will not be reheard. And in case of star desis, uh, when any judgment is pronounced by the court, it is uh, regarded as a reference in the future cases. And so the uh, difference between three of them is that uh, first one is a stay of suit, whereas in case of uh, res judicata, it is uh, uh, the uh, the court is barred from entertaining the suit. And in case of star desis, the judgment of the court is to be uh, regarded as a precedent in the future judgments, as a reference for the future judgments. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, 
uh, what are the you know um, this power of a civil court okay who decides the power of a civil court number one second is suppose the you know there is a uh, let's say irregular exercise of jurisdiction by court then how it is going to affect the decree so a uh, civil court is having its uh, own inherent power to uh, decide the case and uh, in case uh, if it is not having jurisdiction then the judgment will be a nullity it will be void okay uh, what do you mean by interpleader suit and uh, uh, you know what are the limitations of that interpleader so, Sir, in a interpleader suits, uh, the suit is not between the plaintiff and defendant. The plaintiff is ready to uh, give uh, to the rightful claimant. It is between the defendant who interplead among themselves in a in the suit, interpleader suit. And so, uh, limitations is uh, plaintiff must not have any right or he must not claim any interest over the suit. It is uh, between the defendant only. But if uh, the any interest of plaintiff is involved, then the court may also. Uh, order that uh, plaintiff will be also retained as a party till the end of the suit or else a uh, plaintiff will be uh, discharged from the suit on the first hearing and uh, the decision will be on basis of the two defendants who interplead with each other okay uh, so what are the what are the rules uh, regarding uh, non joinder and mixed joinder of parties and uh, suppose uh, the case has started and later on it is uh, you know found out that a necessary party has not been added so in that case uh, you know what is going to happen so necessary party is required to be added as a uh, party if it is uh, not added then that will be non joinder of parties uh, and how it is going to affect the decree suppose we have started a case has started okay trial has started and uh, uh, we come to know that uh, you know this uh, earlier it was not known that mr a is one of the necessary parties but now uh, with more proof and all so the court feels that mr a is a necessary party okay and he must be added to uh, added to it okay so then what the court is going to do what will be the process so uh, without a necessary party judgment cannot be passed if it is passed then that will not operate the party first need to be added he, he uh, the court will hear the parties all the uh, evidence related to it then only it can pass the judgment okay uh, in a civil case okay um, can there be arrest before the judgment has been given okay what are the if yes then if you can if you remember the provisions uh, sections and all and uh, you know uh, in in which cases uh, it would be done so order 37 uh, says about arrest and attachment before judgment in case uh, uh, the court feels that the defendant is about to delay the process of the court or is about to defeat uh, the plaintiff or is about to dispose of the property from the jurisdictions of the court or is uh, not to attain the court process then in that case arrest and it, uh, attachment can be ordered in a civil suit okay um what do you mean by caveat? So caveat is a notice given by a party to the court that uh, the court will not take any action without informing them. Basically, this is a uh, this is a precaution not to pass the ex parte order. Okay. What are the relief uh, you know available to a party against a uh, against uh, an ex parte order? Suppose court has given ex parte order. Okay, against the party. What are the you know uh, options now in uh, front of the party? So the court can uh, so the party can uh, apply for to set aside the ex parte decree, or they can uh, file the appeal. Okay, fine. Um, 
Okay, uh, can you tell me what is your biggest strength and how that will be helpful to you when you become a judge? My, my biggest strength is my confidence. And if I'm confident about any work that I need to do, then I will do it. Know how if I know that how to do that uh, work or not. Uh, but uh, I'll do that work. That is my biggest strength. Okay. Uh, how will you encounter when a case, uh, when a circumstances arises where there is a conflict of interest? So, Ma'am, conflict of interest in um, my interest or? Uh... Yeah, in your interest. As per, I mean, regarding you, I'm asking. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, as a judge, it is uh, my duty that I will pass the judgment on basis of whatever is in front of my eyes. It is not about my interest or my opinions. Only when my opinion matters or my interest matters, only in that stage I can uh, say on that or else my judgment will totally be on basis of the evidence and uh, the arguments of the parties. How do you describe yourself a person who goes with the tide or who is against the tide? Ma'am, against the tide. Always? Not always, but sometime. Yeah, when success, uh want that we should say something again and we can bring some changes in the society then we stand for it when it is something right but previous practices are being not done in a correct way or not beneficial to the society so uh if such questions come just tell that depending on the situation okay ma'am okay. so uh, you said that against the tide so my question is in a uh Domain like judiciary, uh, we require more uh, reformist uh, judges, or we require more of status quoist judges. Okay, means whatever was going on, that should continue. Okay, okay. they are not going to you know change the things. So uh, the change should come from external forces, maybe legislation, etc. Okay, uh, so what is your opinion? The, the, the people so, who are I think, hmm. so I think reformist judges is needed because uh, changes is the rule of the society. Uh, as the society changes, law also changes. So the judge's opinion should also change. Rather than to stick to one law, we should uh, definitely go with the flow of the society and looking at the circumstances, whatever is happening in the society, we should give the judgment. Okay, fine. So the government has proposed some new laws, okay, for your procedural laws and for Indian Penal Code. So what? At least tell me two things that uh, you know that they, they are going, they are planning to change uh, in uh, your uh, Indian Penal Code. So uh, the first, the, the name is to be changed, Bharatiya Naya Sanghita, and uh, they are planning to totally abolish sedition attempt to suicide, abatement of suicide, and uh, they are inserting some of the provisions like organized crime is being added. Uh, recently, in the introduce, introduction of the bill, uh, mental illness word was there, but later on, when it was reintroduced, mental illness word is again being substituted for the, with the word unsoundness of mind. OK. Uh, in Evidence Act, uh, expert opinion, some changes they are planning? Uh, so uh, it will uh, involve the electronic evidence. Means uh, expert opinion can be given in electronic form also. OK. okay. Uh, what are the um, exceptions okay, to privileged communication? So privileged communication exceptions is if uh, the suit is between uh, the parties to the communication. If from, right from the beginning of the suit, uh, there involves uh, fraud or if it is for any illegal purpose. So this much I can recall. OK, what are your optional subjects? So law of crimes, law of property, and personal law. OK. Uh, the last 10 years, okay, can you tell me the grounds of divorce under uh, Hindu Marriage Act, which have been added? 
so uh, not by legislation not by legislation but by uh, supreme, supreme court, court decisions sir uh, uh, in the uh, cruelty part it was added that uh, if uh, false fir uh, has been instituted under section 498a against the husband and it is uh, proof that he it is false or he was acquitted then that will be a ground of divorce as well as if a, a woman uh, did not allow the husband to be with his parents or uh, to maintain his parent uh, then uh, that will also be a ground of cruelty mental cruelty and that will also be a ground of divorce and adultery is uh, now decriminalized but uh, it uh, still remains the ground for divorce the new laws are uh, focusing on gender neutral laws adultery and all. so uh, do you think that it is a uh, you know what is your opinion regarding it uh, some laws had to be uh, you know some uh, leeway had to be given to the uh, to the woman for example okay but uh, to make uh, gender neutral laws uh, it, 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 in a society like us which is actually where uh, the genders are not equal actually to make gender neutral laws for a uh, you know gender unequal society uh, do you think that is a good idea what is your opinion regarding it so i think it is a good idea in fact not only in case of adultery in every aspect it must be gender neutral uh, it is true that women must be given the right but uh, as uh, currently also women and men in some aspect they are being given equal status and opportunity but in some they are not given but uh, maximum in maximum of the cases women are also misusing the powers given to them so the men should also be given the uh, rights to fight for their own right and i think we all are equal and article 14 provides for equality before law so gender neutral must come to the society okay now under the hindu laws okay or generally speaking under secular laws also can a uh, man or husband claim maintenance uh, from his wife and uh, you know whatever uh, you can also tell us regarding the provisions okay sir so under section 24 of hindu marriage act a uh, husband if wife is having proper means he can uh, demand for uh, the pendency lit maintenance which is during the pendency of the litigation as well as under section 25 also if uh, husband is not having proper means but wife is having then under section 25 of hindu marriage act also husband can demand uh, for uh, maintenance from the wife uh, what do you mean by proper means suppose there is a there is a situation where the uh, husband is orphan and unemployed does not have parents so he does not have any property okay plus he is also unemployed whereas the uh, the the wife okay she is also not employed she is not working but she has lot of property okay in her name uh, through her father in that case this husband is if 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 we comes to the court and says that you know my wife should maintain me um, what will be the result in that case so if the husband is a able person he is having proper education but still he is not going to work then in that case wife is not uh, bound to maintain husband uh, uh, if he is having proper education he can go for work then uh, maintenance will not be given to him okay in case he is physically inform then so in that case he will get uh, maintenance from the wife okay uh, now tell me in the vasmita why there is a significant as you are uh, discussing about divorces so i will ask you what is significant rise of divorce cases uh, from in the last 10 years when we see the scenario it has changed drastically so uh, what is your opinion uh, that why there is such a huge rise in the divorce cases ma'am it might be because of the difference of opinions which is arising right now previously men and women they are not sharing their views opinions they are ha leading a uh, different kind of life but currently as everyone is having proper resources proper means everyone knows their capabilities so there was a the conflicting views opinions as well as uh, the um, everyone is uh, trying to dominate themselves so that might be a reason uh, to the rising cases of divorce 
Okay. So, um, um, can you tell me what was the last constitutional amendment to our constitution? Sir, so the abrogation of Article 370. Uh, sir, I'll read on this. I don't know. Okay. Now, some just legal GK. Who was the first uh, Chief Justice of uh, Odisha High Court? Sir, Justice Veera Kishore Rai. And uh, when was it established? Sir, uh, Odisha High Court was established on 26 July 1948. Okay. And uh, first woman Chief Justice of India? Sir, unfortunately, we till now we don't have any woman Chief Justice of India. According to the current, uh, uh, you know, um, retirement dates, uh, are we expecting a woman Chief Justice in uh, next, uh, let's say, five, ten years? Yes, uh, Justice B.B. Nagartana is in the line to be the first woman Chief Justice of India. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, first woman judge of uh, Supreme Court? Uh, sir, it is Fatima B.B. Justice Fatima B.B. Okay. And um, first woman judge of Odisha High Court? Sir, Justice Amiya Kumari uh, Panda, Sir Panda Patnaik, I'm just confused on that. Okay. Just check it again, okay? Yes, it sir. Is Amiya Kumari Panda or Amiya Kumari Padi, just check it. Uh, I'm also yes, not very sure about that. Hmm. Yes, um, okay. Um, First uh, um, chairman of NHRC. Sorry, sir, I don't know this. First um, Odia Chief Justice of India. Sir, Justice Ranganath Mishra. Same answer for that question also. Okay, okay. sir. Right. So, uh, who's the current? Uh, you belong to which district? Sir, Sundargarh. Sundargarh, current district judge of Sundargarh? So, no idea, I'm not having any idea. That is too factual. Okay, but anyway, then we can ask you questions like this. Then uh, one stress component also may be there. But uh, we had started the interview, interviews have started yesterday. Yesterday it was more or less cordial. Yeah, today for one or two they have asked it. So I'll just repeat, I mean, in that format, I'll ask you. Okay, so here what they'll do is they'll ask you five, six questions, okay, uh, continuously, rapid fire mode. Okay, they're not expecting actually to get answers, but they to put some pressure on you. Pressure. Okay. Uh -huh, to pressure on you. For example, let's say CRPC. Okay, CRPC, uh, tell me what is uh, section um, 104 of CRPC. So, then 109. Uh -huh. Okay, so you, you will think for three seconds, they'll give the next section. Okay, 34. Right, I'm thinking 42. So that means it is very, very difficult. Even if I am giving the first part of the, you know, title or first part of the, you know, the, the section, they'll go to the next section. Okay, so in, in case you're asked questions like this, just maintain your composure. It is just to... And these questions are asked generally uh, uh, the initial five minutes of the interview. Okay, so that then they'll ask you very comfortable questions, but then those who cannot balance or those who cannot, uh, you know, um, the pressure. then <laughs> even if they ask you what is your name, that you'll be thinking what is my name. Okay, so uh, <laughs> if they're asking questions like that, you become. Okay. okay. My uh, last question is that: uh, Do you think that uh, means uh, digitization will um, means do, what are the uh, negative points? Like we say, pawns and cons, uh, cons. So pros and cons. So in that way, what are the demerits or drawbacks of uh, including digitization in the judiciary system? So, um, positive aspect we all know. But that's uh, when something is positive, something negative also goes side by side. So I'm asking the negative portion. 
Ma'am, uh, the literate, if uh, we will uh, see the uh, state of Odessa, the literacy rate is not that high. So if everything, if it will be digitalization, then it uh, may arise that the people will be, uh, the many uh, people will misuse this power and uh, may the poor people will not get proper justice or they will not come to the court. And uh, as they were not so much aware of this digitalization process, maybe uh, many will just uh, eradicate money from them also. And uh, about the senior most uh, lawyers will also face problem as they are not that much acquainted with the computer resources and all. So digitalization will also um, hamper them. Okay, thank you. Okay, fine. My last question to you would be um, under our constitution, the Supreme Court has been kept away okay from adjudicating uh, one particular domain if there is a dispute in that domain the supreme court does not have any power okay uh, to take up those cases can you tell me uh, which domain i'm talking about so related to the sovereignty and integrity of the country mainly interstate water disputes okay, okay. interstate water disputes the there is a technical committee under uh, this uh, water dispute tribunals they will give a interim award and a final award okay courts can implement that award but courts themselves cannot including supreme court give that award that okay. if there are thousand cusacks of water karnataka will get 600 tamil nadu will get 400 that this technical committee will give of the interstate water dispute tribunal okay so interstate water disputes that won't be uh, taken to the supreme court supreme court won't have any say on that okay okay so that will be the end of the interview um, overall see your smile and all these things which uh, that is fine one thing i could observe because that here in a virtual interview is difficult but still then i thought that in the initial phase uh, your hand movement was a little bit visible okay so that means uh, there is significant hand movement because if you are uh, you know if that is visible through this small frame so keep that in mind okay keep your hands on your knees or legs depending on your height okay and uh, ensure that you know subconsciously the hand does not start moving okay so that you can uh, take care otherwise quality of answer and all those things very good and uh, i expect that you will get a good rank Okay. Thank you, sir. So, if you yeah. will... so, yeah, how much marks? Uh, uh, marks today, I'll be giving you around 85, okay, out of 100. You were able to answer most of the questions, right? Even the opinion based questions were properly answered. Yeah, that was that's, I also agree with, sir, that uh, you have maintained your composer, your flow of speech, your pitch level, also, which I always talk to students. That is uh, also. Clear, clearly maintained and answers were to the point and whatever that how much is required you told that much that is the best thing that i could find it out you don't elaborate the things that is not required They're asking something we can give the answer in one or two lines okay that's what we tell the students and uh you maintain this the format which you are right now don't change this is the best way you have done and you have given the answers also correctly so out of 100 also i will be giving you 85. When is your interview? Last week. 20 seconds. Okay. Sir? Okay. 20 seconds. Your interview is in 20 seconds. Yes, sir. Okay. So just go through the morning legal news before going for the interview. I have an updation of that. Okay. okay. I said 20 seconds, not 21st time having the interview. Okay, it's fine. So uh, nothing, just uh, if you ensure that, you know, you, you keep this smile throughout the interview, you will you will get very good marks. Because the content side is, I don't think you will face any problem. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you.